So this should be a fun video. On the right, we have an SOK battery. On the left, a cheap knockoff. They have the same case, the same handles, the same terminals, and even the same bolt pattern. But who knows what's inside, so we're gonna rip it apart. All right, here we go. What in the world? It reminds me of a Ruxu battery. Look at all of this tape. But it does have a temperature sensor, so that's a good sign. And this heat shrink is damaged on the positive terminal. Before we open this up further, let's test if this low temp charging protection works. So first we're charging with 10 amps and we're gonna dip this sensor into the ice water. Oh, look at that, it actually works. Look at all of this foam inside of here, they really crammed it in there. And now it's charging again. So yeah, low temp charging protection does work. That's a good sign actually. This is a 150 amp BMS. And the SOK can only do 100 amps. And this is a JBD, so this is the same one that makes Overkill Solar's BMS. I don't like how it's mounted, but this is a high quality BMS. And we have a balance cable, a temp sensor, and this is where the Bluetooth would go. Let's just check on their app and see if this thing will actually connect. No way. Is this it? <gasps> oh, this is a different battery. Darn it, this is one on my shelf. Okay, let's go back. Yeah, it does not have Bluetooth, unfortunately, guys. I wish they included that module. That would be very nice. Uh-oh, look at this wiring job. Ooh, yikes, look at that. These are 206 amp hour cells, just like the SOK. But on the label, it says 200 amp hours. These look brand new. These feel pretty solid. But the balance wire connections are kind of weird. Look at this, they ultrasonically welded and then soldered to this little nickel strip, which is okay, I guess. It just looks pretty bad, but it is strong. I did wiggle all of them, so. But these are not serviceable like the SOK battery. You can't just swap out one of these cells. But this balance cable looks awful. We need to open this thing up. So luckily the tape was not hiding anything. It was just for organization. I bet these will pull full capacity. These look brand spanking new. So they look similar to a Lyshen and the Eve cell, but they are CATL cells, mainly because of the terminal. The negative looks like an Eve, but it's cocked at a 45 degree angle. And then the overpressure relief valve, this is a typical CATL one. And I just found them on Alibaba. Yep, these are CATL cells. Something else to notice is that this is mounted between two insulators and a bunch of foam in a case. In the SOK, it has room to breathe and lots of space to expel radiant heat. This one does not. But this thing is a beast and you don't have to dissipate that much heat. So it might be just fine. But yeah, if you're trying to do high C rate discharge testing, I don't think that this is ideal to have a BMS mounted like this. Also, the low temp charging sensor was not attached to the cells. So that's another major downside. You want this to be attached directly to the cells with like Kapton tape or something. So now we're charging with 123 amps and we're gonna see if it can handle this. Um, this is a 150 amp common port BMS. So I'm assuming that it can handle 150 amps in or out. And so far it's working. So let's come back in like an hour when this is fully charged. So it passed the test and I did the final bit of absorption with the power supply and we're at 14.8 volts. It's settled at 13.65, which is normal. Also the CBA4, they just updated the firmware and they have all these pretty pictures and they made some improvements, which is nice. We're gonna do discharge, detect lithium iron phosphate. We're pulling 35 amps continuously for this test. It can't go higher than that, unfortunately. And I was gone all day, but the test is now complete. 216 amp hours, 2,770 watt hours. So it absolutely passed this test with flying colors. That is really good. This is actually better than the SOK, I believe. Wow, pretty incredible. Okay, okay, not bad. I was not expecting this one. So in the previous clips, that was actually three months ago and we tore apart this knockoff SOK. And I told the company that the internal components were actually pretty nice, but the build quality was pretty low. So what they did is built a new one. So we're gonna try to find out what improvements they made in the second prototype. And going from a first prototype to a second prototype, there's usually significant changes. And I didn't tell them any details of my teardown. I told them just to match the SOK battery. So let's tear this apart and see what they're using inside and if the build quality changed at all. Pretty crazy they can make a new prototype in three months. Oh, no way. 
They actually copied the SOK like I told them. They put the BMS on the top. Oh, this has some shipping damage. These terminals are bent inward because this battery actually arrived upside down. And this is much more ideal, having it on the roof of the case, because now it's not touching the cells and it's not wrapped up in foam and tape. So this can actually dissipate heat. And they also mounted the temperature sensor to the cells. I did not tell them to do that. They did that on their own. So first we're gonna remove the balance lead. And they're using the same BMS as before. Now let's see if they improve that balance cable. <gasps> Look at this, the balance cable is not even attached right there. Yeah, this cable is not attached at all. That is not good. Also notice that the BMS actually smashed these cables, so they're gonna have to go in here and redesign all of that. But what's crazy is they actually copied the SOK battery. They put the BMS on top, and now they have this support arm instead of using a bunch of foam. So they are getting closer and closer but they still have some work to do, obviously. If this arrived to a customer, this would be a dead on arrival unit. And then they would have to pay the return shipping on this very heavy battery, which is like 60 pounds. But they are using high quality cells in a BMS. So in the third prototype, if they can fix all of this balance lead problems, they might actually have a good battery. But I have no idea how long it will take to get the third prototype, so I'm gonna post this video right now. And then in a few more months, I'll make a second video, a part two, because I don't wanna wait. We have no idea what the quality control of this company will be in the future. I'm actually talking through a distributor sending these out to me. It's not even the manufacturer, so I don't even know the name of this company. But if they come out with a good battery, I will be sure to let you guys know, and we'll do a full teardown on that final prototype. So in the meantime, I would stick with SOK battery. And I wonder if the knockoff will actually be cheaper because the SOK is already ridiculously cheap. I bet they'll just match the price at the end of the day. Also, if you have recommendations on what they should fix on this knockoff, please list them in the comment section below and I'm sure that they will see it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'm sticking with the recommendation of the SOK battery is my favorite cheap battery still. I still have not found someone that's able to beat this at the price. Anyways, thanks for watching and I